like, share, subscribe. Hey y'all, welcome back. Number 42 here, we are just subtracting fractions. That's it. So, um, you know, I say it like that, but uh, let's review how we subtract fractions before we get into the weeds here. So let's say we just have, you know, just generically A over B minus C over D. So there's two kind of plain fractions. And I'll show you a little example here. Let's say we had like one-third minus you know, one-seventh. Okay, so typically when you subtract fractions, you got to find a common denominator. Now, um, in school, you're probably taught to try to find the least common multiple of the denominators. But in actuality, you don't need to find the least common multiple to subtract these. You just need to find a common multiple. So uh, instead of trying to figure out what the least common multiple is, and oftentimes it will just be this, but um, to find a common multiple, all you need to do is just multiply the two denominators together. So 3 times 7 is going to be 21. Right? So what I want to do is try to force both of my denominators in this fraction to be 21. And so to do that, I'm going to multiply each fraction by a what I call a special form of 1. And that would be 7 over 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1. Multiplying a number by 1 is not going to change its value. So this is a safe operation to do where we're just manipulating what the fraction looks like, not what it actually equals. Okay, we're not changing the value of this, 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 uh, uh, th this fraction. We're just going to change how it looks. Um, now similarly, I want to change this fraction so that it has the same denominator. Right? So I want to multiply this by 3 over 3. Okay, so notice how basically I took each fraction and multiplied, I haven't done the multiplication yet, but I multiplied um, each fraction by a form of 1 where the numerator and denominator are the same number as the other fraction's denominator. Okay, I know that's kind of a word full, but basically I took this 1 7th and multiplied it by 3 over 3, I took the 1 3rd and multiplied it by 7 over 7. So in general, that's what we want to do here. We want to multiply the first fraction by the second fraction's denominator over itself. So in this case, it would be like d over d. Same thing goes with the second fraction. We're going to multiply that by the denominator b over b. Okay, so I want to just show it to you, like, you know, show you a specific case and the general case. All right, so... Now, to multiply fractions is actually a little easier than adding or subtracting because you don't have to find a common denominator or anything. All you have to do is just multiply straight across. So 7 times 1 would be 7. We'd have 7 over 7 times 3 is 21. And we have minus 3 over 21, 3 times 1. And okay, so that, that's what you would get there. Up here, we're going to have the same thing, except we can't actually do the multiplication. So I'm just going to write the two, I'm going to say like a times d. Um, and just to kind of stay consistent with my formatting here, I'm going to go in alphabetical order. Uh, multiplication is what we call commutative, so the order doesn't matter. For instance, like 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. So d times a is the same as a times d. And I just like to keep things in alphabetical order, so I'm going to write it as a d over d times b would be the same thing as b times d. Again, just trying to keep it in alphabetical order. Minus... And then over here, I've got C times B, or BC, over BD. So notice in both of these cases, I now have the common denominator. And so now I can subtract. And when you subtract, after getting the common denominator, you just subtract the numerators. So here I have like 7 minus 3 over 21. Here I would have AD minus BC over BD. Okay, now 7 minus 3 is going to be 4. Okay, I'm actually just going to, I guess I'll leave that as a separate step, 4 over 21. Um, up here, you can't really reduce that any, right? There's nothing, you know, we're, we're, we're in sort of the general uh, realm here. Uh, we're trying to express this, you know, how to subtract generally. We can't, we can't simplify this anymore, so we're just going to leave it like that. Okay, so this is basically what you're going to get when you subtract fractions. Okay, here's the general case, specific case. 
So now let's go and look at our problem because basically we're just subtracting fractions again. So we're going to follow sort of these rules of how you do that. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the original problem. 2x minus 1 over x plus 3 minus x minus 2 over 2x plus 1. Let me drag all this over here so you can kind of just see them all stacked on top of each other. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find a common denominator. And so how did we do that? Whether it was the general case or the specific case, we multiplied by the denominator of the other fraction. So like in this case, I want to multiply this first fraction by 2x plus 1 over 2x plus 1. Similarly, I'm going to multiply the second fraction by x plus 3 over x plus 3. Okay, now I'm not going to work horizontally here because this is getting a little messy. I'm going to work it down. But the next step is going to be to write the two fractions separately um, and then multiply this together. Now, before I start multiplying, I want to look back at my answer choices and just kind of see what kind of format I'm looking at trying to make this look like. It looks like the denominator is going to stay factored. So don't worry about multiplying the denominator, the bottom part, right? You can, you can actually see the x plus 3 and 2x plus 1 right there. So we're not going to multiply that. But the numerator is written in standard form in all five choices. So I am going to multiply the numerators together. I'll do that in a separate step, um, but just heads up there. Okay, so I'm going to multiply these together. Here I get 2x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. Uh-oh. That's okay. I'll just, I'll just type the whole thing from scratch here. Divided by, um, and now I'm going to put the x plus 3 first instead of the 2x plus 1. I think, and the reason for that is I'm just looking at my answer choices. They all have the x plus 3 first. So I'm just going to try to, you know, model, you know, always got an eye on where I'm trying to go here. So I'm going to, I'm going to put it, write it like that. And then for uh, my second fraction, I've got x minus 2 times x plus 3 over x plus 3 times 2x plus 1. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to leave my denominators alone, just kind of because that they didn't get multiplied in any answer choices. And I'm but I am going to multiply the, 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 the numerators. So to multiply two binomials, you have to multiply each term in the first binomial by each term in the second binomial. There's a common uh, mnemonic device to kind of keep track of everything that you're multiplying here. Uh, it's called FOIL. You may have heard of that. But here we've got 2x times 2x is going to be 4x squared. 2x minus 1 is going to be minus 2x. 2x times 1 is going to be plus 2x. And then 1 times negative 1 is going to be minus 1. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's going to be the numerator of the first fraction. And then the numerator of the second fraction, if I can throw this in there, uh, we got to multiply this out. So same deal here. In fact, I'm going to erase these little markings because it's just kind of getting kind of messy. Um, I'm going to multiply x times x. And so that's going to be x squared. And then x times 3 is going to be plus 3x. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. And 3 times negative 2 is going to be negative 6. And all of that is over x plus 3 times 2x plus 1. Okay. Let me move this up just a, just a hair here to give us a little bit more room to work. Okay, so we multiplied the, the two numerators out, and now we can combine the fractions. Um, be very careful here because we are subtracting the second fraction. So we're going to need to subtract each one of these terms. So before I combine any like terms here, I'm just going to make a conscious effort to write out each of these terms um, with the uh, opposite sign. So like I've got minus x squared 
minus a positive 3x, so it's just going to be minus 3x, minus a negative 2x is going to be plus 2x, and minus a negative 6 is going to be plus 6. So now I've got this long polynomial on top, um, but we're pretty much, we're getting, there's really just one step left here, and that is to combine our like terms. So let's first combine all the square terms. We've got 4x squared minus 1x squared. So 4 minus 1 is going to be 3. So 3x squared, let me delete this one. Okay, now, um, so we've kind of narrowed it down here. It's going to be d or e. Unless one of these factors, I don't think so, but let's, let's just see how this goes, plays out. Um, now we want to combine our linear terms. So we've got negative 2x plus 2x. Um, those are just going to cancel each other out. That equals 0, so I'm not even going to bother with that. I'm just going to delete them. And then we've got negative 3x plus 2x. That's going to be negative 1x. You don't need to write the 1. Um, so I'm just going to write negative x. And then we've got negative 1 plus 6 is going to be a positive 5. And there you go. Here is our answer. So looking through our answer choices, it looks like, yep, that's represented uh, with answer choice D. So D is going to be our answer for 42. And that's it for 42. Yeah, so uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And I hope you guys have a great day.